I'm on 100 acres just outside of Kilmore in Victoria. They've only had 368 mil of rain since January 1. It's now the middle of October. We're in drought conditions and yet I'm standing knee high in fodder and I'm soaking wet. Today is a story about the small water cycle, multi-species pastures and clever rotations and what impact that is making on this small grazing business. Hamish, how are you mate? Good Tim, good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for having us out here today. Um, regular viewers of the channel would have seen you on the channel before and we're back again for another look. We're standing in a paddock with some wonderful multi-species here at the moment and you're going to take us through the strategies behind using your plant growth to capture more water and then managing your stock to look after your plants. Correct Tim, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. So Hamish, we often hear of the term small water cycle being bandied about, mate. What does a small water cycle mean to your property and to your family? Well, the small water cycle is the process by which you draw water into your plants and essentially harvest the water through the evening. So these plants are trapping atmospheric moisture and they're bringing it down onto the ground. Oh, absolutely. And the taller they are, the more capacity they have. They have many little features on their various leaves and structures which allow water to naturally condense onto that surface. Yep. And that condensing process accelerates with the more biology there is. And it holds it. And the reason it holds it is when the sun comes up and gets some altitude and there's a bit of heat, that water that does evaporate has a cooling effect on the plants. So keeps, like a natural refrigerator, keeps the moisture down low in the pastures. So your topsoil stays alive even on the hottest of days. Totally, totally. So we've got, uh, this weekend, we've got a top of 27 degrees forecast for this area. Um, and your soil will still be nice and cool even in the middle of that heat of the day. That's correct, yeah. So, so if this ground was cut short, graze really short yep then we're talking maybe a few millilitres of water on the surface yep but where we have some depth and you'll see that where we graze where we have some depth and we don't over graze it we maintain the capacity for the plants to collect water so how much of this would you take off with your cattle because you graze cattle here you've got we Jersey cows cattle. yep how much of this would you take off in a grazing we would try to take between uh, in the order of a half, certainly not much more than than two thirds. And do you panic about seed and that sort of thing, grass going to seed, or do you not worry about it too much? No, no. What we're what we're looking for is height. We're looking for capacity for the plants to draw that moisture in, and we're looking for the plants to protect the soil through the rest of the day on a regular basis. So lesson number one here is the taller your grass and your herbage in your paddock, the deeper the dam you've got. Absolutely. And the deeper the dam you've got, the cooler your soil stays, the more moist it stays, and the more microbial life in it. Absolutely. And that's fertility, isn't it? And that translates into fertility, and you look at what you are seeing here, we've got vetch, there's crimson clover, there's all manner of things growing. And it's been slow because we've had a very cold, cold spring and it's been relatively dry. The vast bulk of the moisture that you're looking at in this paddock is coming from overnight dew. Well, Hamish, just before we get back in the buggy, mate, if people are wondering about how much water the small water cycle collects for you, I think my legs are a fairly good indication, aren't they? Oh, I'm soaked! Where's my <laughs> gumboots? I didn't think I'd need gumboots in Kilmore in a drought. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing, just how much water. Small water cycle people. Look at this, look at this. I'm soaked. So Hamish, you are growing great pasture here. You've got lots of multi-species going on. You're promoting the small water cycle, but you're cultivating as well. You're doing selective small areas of cultivation on your farm every year. Talk us through why cultivation is so important to your strategy. Well, the landscape's a mosaic, Tim. Lots of different parts to it. 
and not all of the parts work at the same pace. So you can't graze the same spot every time. You, you've got to work with how the, there's a flow. And sometimes the right thing is to disturb the ground. So in this instance, what you're looking here is we've made a decision about turning in a portion of the emerging growth. We feel there wasn't quite enough in the, in the growth in total because of the stage that that particular area is at and it's at a different stage to the other areas that we've been in today. So we're gonna feed the bugs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn in that growing juice, uh, natural amino acids, they're all kinds of bioavailable nutrients. I'm gonna turn them in so that the microflora in the soil, the fungi, all of those things that, that live on those kinds of materials get to have them. So essentially what we've done is accelerate the growing cycle through a season by turning over and we're early enough in our season here to be able to go, yep, odds are we'll get a bit enough moisture to bring out what we need. And we've got layers to this cake, haven't we? I mean, we've got lines of trees just behind us. Yep. We've got some contours holding natural water flows on the landscape. Yep. We've got a small amount of cultivation here, and then we've got a very large patch of undisturbed multi-species pasture. So the amount of cultivation compared to the amount of pasture is actually very small when you look at your whole farm landscape. Oh, it's very small, and it is deliberately so. And you wouldn't come and cultivate this paddock every year. This is just a kickstart for it. Well, we'll be strategic about it. We'll sit back and we'll look at what's grown, what we've grazed, and what we think is the appropriate thing to do for that next. So we don't have a rule book. We aren't doing this by that date. We are learning to work with nature in terms of what generates the most drive and growth, how we ha harvest the most amount of moisture. This is an east facing slope. There's a very specific reason that we've treated this area at the moment. So we're hoping that we'll get enough growth back out of this that when we come into the summer, that the it will protect itself. So it's not being hit with the heavy part of the sun. So as always, timing with cultivation is a critical element as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, Tim. None of these techniques of themselves that are used generally in agriculture are bad. They're bad only when they're put into a program that is regimented, structured, and starts to damage things as opposed to work with the natural growing cycles. Well, let's have a look at an area that you've just finished grazing. Yep. And we'll go and check out what that pasture looks like. Absolutely. Now Hamish, there's a lot of management strategies that you're putting into place here. Not least of all is grazing management and you're using a very dairy centric grazing management system that all rely on Mr Gallagher's reels and electric fences to make them work. Uh, absolutely Tim. The electric reel, uh, these are, I mean these are just a gift. They're wonderful. They, uh, the capacity to run out a, a fence for an area in a very short period of time. The animals are trained to the use of the fence. So the minute you pick up a reel, they know that something exciting is going to happen. So this is actually a positive reinforcement to the cattle as well. It's like a reward when they see this. Oh, totally, totally. Now we've got a mob of about 20 cows behind us over here. Yep. You're grazing them on about 1,200 square metres a day, about 35 metres by 35 metres? Of that order, yes. That's what we look to. We're trying to get about five kilograms per square metre. So we've got herbage over here that we've just been walking through before that's nearly knee height it's a little bit lower in this area here and you can see what it's doing to my pants plenty of water here but in a day the cattle are taking it down to this you wouldn't let them go any further than that would you no absolutely not absolutely not what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep some enough green material above the surface in order for the the plant to respond so the so you have to think about the plant at this point the plant's been grazed but you don't want to graze it so much that you've taken away all of its capacity to photosynthesize and the other thing is when you take herbage off the top you're actually taking root capacity off the bottom at the same time aren't you you're lowering the plant's capacity from both ends you are doing that so but it's been grazed once so there's a sugar reserve so the plant can go ha ah, and express new growth in that in that 24 to 48 hours afterwards so there is some shock in the roots loss yes that's true 
but the plant is not producing from its sugar reserve more leaf that's then eaten again within 24 or 48 hours. Cause so the daily moves are critical, aren't they? They allow recovery and, and life of the roots to continue. They allow for the health of the plants. So a few treadings, a couple of reels and a good quality energizer and you can break a large paddock up into small paddocks with very little work and you can achieve this incredible result in a drought. That's right Tim, that's right and this space that we're standing in this was grazed on uh, about the 3rd of September so we've already grazed this once we were doing a second grazing so what we're able to do is we're able to protect other parts of the farm that we want to see much more herbage growing. So you get to see the kind of balance that's going on now. It's a Tetris game. So we've had one day's grazing where I'm standing here. Yep. How long until cows are back here? Uh, it could be anywhere. That's a hard question to answer, I know, because it's seasonally dependent, isn't it? Well, we're looking for 150 days separation under general conditions, but we'll take a shorter time frame if we've got growing conditions that are right and at this point in time we're managing the drought so we are thinking about what is going to happen here over the next three months where the animals are going to go to next time and what our overall plan is so in the growing cycle because our spring's been so late we can come here and do two grazings close together a bit like mowing your lawn right responds pretty good in the, the right part of the year but but now that we've grazed we probably won't be back in this space until the late summer hamish there's something else to note here as well i see tree decline in a lot of paddocks around australia where you have set stocking and the cattle are under the trees and you get urine and, and feces concentrating under the trees you get a build-up of beetles they then attack the trees and the trees start to die your trees look pretty healthy mate yeah, well, we're pretty happy about that. We like our trees. The trees are really important. And so, there's no dirt around the base of them either, is there? No, 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 no. no. So we don't have animals camping under trees. The process of 24-hour exposure for grazing means the animals are focused on eating the grasses. They take the grasses off, and we move them on. So there's no accumulation of manures, there's no compaction, there's no surface lateral root damage. It's, it's all about understanding that these animals are meant to move through the environment. They're not meant to be set in a space and essentially destroy it. Well, Hamish, thanks for having us out again here today and talking about the small water cycle and the positive ways that you can manage your property to increase its fertility and its capacity to have thriving cattle on it, even in a drought. Now, it's quite fitting. We've got even some cultivation happening over behind us at the moment. You're strategically managing your property to not only maintain its fertility, but to improve and, dare I say, regenerate it. And the secret is water. The secret is absolutely understanding the water cycle in your space, understanding how the water flows, how to hold it. It really is important. And your interventions are timely, thoughtful. They don't take very long, do they? No, they don't. They don't take very long and I think that there's a, I think there's a responsibility for all of us to understand how to ensure that water is held and moves through our entire landscape in a, in a sensible way. And I suppose if more people manage their own small water cycle on their own properties, it's a cumulative gain, isn't it? If you had a whole district that was managing the small water cycle on every property in that district, the science is in, you get more rainfall for the whole district. Uh, the science is more than in. There is a fantastic set of rainfall videos out of the uh, Chihuahuan Desert in Mexico where regenerative practice has been run at a large enough scale that they actually make it rain because moisture brings moisture. And what we seem to not understand in one of the driest countries in the world is that when we hold our moisture, we make it rain. The government makes you pay money for moisture you pull out of a bore. It makes you pay money for moisture you pull out of a river. It makes you license your dam, but they don't make you license your pasture yet. Here's a free resource. Well, it's a resource. The fertility that comes with the moisture 
is extraordinary, but you have to understand how to hold your moisture. Send this video to someone who wants to increase their farm productivity and their farm fertility for free. And if you like this kind of video, don't forget to hit the little subscribe button down there. Give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on the channel. And now we've got memberships as well. Hamish, thanks very much for having us out, mate. Tim, pleasure, on you. as always.